Well, what's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to TechStream. So today, in partnership with TLR Esports again, we're taking a look at another QPad product. Today we have the DX80, an ambidextrous esports RGB gaming mouse. So, as I just mentioned, this one is done with the TLR Esports team again. We've done a little bit of work with them recently. Hopefully we're going to have a good partnership with them going on into the future. And one of their sponsors is QPad. QPad have sent them over some DX80s. We've got one here to review and we're going to just go through what it is and what I think of it. So the DX80 is available from a few different retailers now, starting from about £30 over at Overclockers UK, funnily enough. So the DX80 is a relatively cheap, I say, eSports gaming mouse. It does have a few RGB options, it does have a few buttons, it is an ambidextrous design, or in other words, it is relatively symmetrical. Your forwards and backwards buttons are aimed primarily at right-handed people being on the left-hand side of the mouse. It is RGB to an extent, we'll get to that later, but yeah, so features. This is a 120 gram mouse. Now, QPad have advertised this as lightweight. When you've got things like the Model O at like 60, it's a bit of a hefty weight now, okay? It does have a six foot braided cable attached to it. I've just got it linked around into my Microsoft Surface here. It is RGB. It's got a few different buttons. We've got a forwards and backwards on the side here. We do have a scroll wheel, which does click, and we do have up and down for your DPIs. So not a massive amount of features again. Um, something that sort of comes across over from the MX75 I had in the past. So sides on this mouse are rubber textured. Okay, so these are actually rubbered while the top is like a matte paint. The QPad logo laser etched into the back there. So not a massive amount. Now the main bit behind this is obviously esports people are into their sensors and switches. Now couldn't find any information on the switches, but the sensor is in it is an optical PMW3325 sensor now probably doesn't mean a lot to you but basically it's a relatively standard sensor used by all of the cheap far eastern brands a lot of the unknown things you'll find on amazon they use this optical red light sensor um okay no standout thing there what it does have on the bottom is actually an adjustable polling rate uh, polling rate is effectively the speed at which it speaks to your computer um stick it on a thousand unless you have any problems leave it at the maximum thousand hertz um you shouldn't have any problems with that so the other thing i discussed it is an rgb mouse okay and it is adjusted by pressing the buttons and as you'll see as i press the button it flashes a color to indicate the speed um, the dpi setting so basically white yeah the white one is the fastest as we go down, we get to red. Red is the slowest. Um, however, the irritating thing is now, it is meant to be an RGB mouse. If I press and hold both sides and press and hold both tops, okay, um, oh, press and hold the top for three seconds, it will change mode. Yeah, which you think, great, and then I can change the color, which you can. However, changing the color also changes the DPI. So uh, unless you, unless the color that you like happens to match the DPI that you want, um, you're a bit screwed. Obviously, you can adjust uh, speed settings in Windows as well if you're using Windows. Um, but yeah, the color is tied to the DPI. Funnily enough, I had exactly the same thing with a thermal tape mouse not that long ago. Probably the same sort of thing underneath at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, there's a few different options. You do have the strobing as we have here, you've seen the RGB cycle, you have solid light, and if you press it again, oh, press and hold, we do have off. So if you don't like RGB, you have off, and it will just flash then when you choose your DPIs. So the RGB on it, yes, it does have it, but realistically, you don't get many options. Um, I would probably be just leaving it on the standard cycle. Um, because unless the color that you want happens to be the same DPI that you want, yeah, you haven't really got RGB. But it's a £30 mouse. Now, do I like it? Yeah, it's not a bad mouse. It's 
quite small in the hand okay it's it suits somebody that's going to sort of like hold the whole mouse um, I don't have I have average sized hands and yet it fits nicely in the palm it is an ambidextrous mouse so lefties can use it as well but would I recommend it yeah it's it's not a bad mouse again though as with the keyboard pricing is a bit of a sore point now I reviewed a thermal tape mouse Talon V2 I think it was pretty much the same mouse it was 20 quid 10 pound cheaper or a third cheaper it's got no standout features to make it worth that extra 10 pound unfortunately unless you get a good price on one there are better op either cheaper options for the same effectively the same or very similar mouse or better options for the same money or maybe a little bit more um, I love the Corsair M65 I've got one that I've probably been using for nearly 10 years since it first came out the original M65 still got it still use it I've got a mad cat's rat somewhere again lovely mouse a few standout features on it this is just a relatively mundane average product it's a shame um, it would be nice to see Coupad to come out with some outstanding products and I do have one that stands out I'm going to do a review on it shortly Unfortunately, the keyboard and the mouse that we've looked at so far don't really do it for me. So there we go, guys. That is the QPad DX80. Unfortunately, not the standard product I was hoping for. But hey, I'm going to give them another chance. I do have something that I'm looking forward to reviewing. I've had a quick look at it, and hopefully they can come up with some more products of that quality. I do know their MX... Is it their MX? Yes, their MX95 keyboard. Um, next one up from the one that I have reviewed has got some standout features. So I know the brand are capable of doing them. This keyboard, this mouse, that keyboard unfortunately weren't. But the next one is a good product and I definitely recommend watching it. So, as always, if you want to see more of me, click that subscribe button. And if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you very much guys and bye for now.